Hi guys, today we're going to learn about scientific design. One of the things we do as scientists is we run experiments. And in order to run a good experiment, you have to know the steps that you're going to take throughout the lab. So I've broken this down into five different parts. I like to use the acronym POHEC to help you remember it. P-O-H-E-C. The first part of scientific design is establishing what's the problem. Now the problem could be something very small, um, something like my tomatoes in my garden aren't growing. And you want to try and figure out, well, how do I make them grow better? Uh, it could also be something much more significant like um, how do we cure breast cancer? Okay, that's a much bigger, much more significant research type of problem. One experiment might be fairly simple and another experiment might take years and years to try to work on. Once you figure out the problem that you want to work on, the next thing you go down to is observe. When you start off with an experiment, you don't start just from scratch. You see, there's a lot of research out there that's probably already been done on this type of problem or this question that another scientist might have tried to look into. For instance, the concept of breast cancer. That has been researched for decades and if you're going to try and learn something about how to cure breast cancer, the best thing that you could do is probably try to find out what information we already have about it. So under observe, we're also going to write gather information and we're going to do a lot of research on the subject. Okay. In our next step, we're going to try to form a hypothesis. Now, a hypothesis is an educated guess. One of the things that I want you to try to do when you write your hypotheses is to write it as an if-then statement. For instance, instead of writing, rain will help my tomatoes grow, try to write it as, if I increase the amount of water, then my tomatoes will grow larger. Okay, so we're establishing what's going to happen if I increase quantitatively some amount of a variable and we're trying to look at what's going to happen to our second variable which would be um, the size of the tomatoes. Once you've created your hypothesis, now is the time to test it. Now that's the largest part of the experiment. You're going to want to create a procedure and you're going to follow that procedure to collect some data. We're going to talk about the ways that we collect data and how we record them later on. Once you record your data, you have to figure out what's the relationship between my two variables. Did adding more water really increase the size of the tomato plants or was that not true at all? So once you create your experiment and you run your experiment and you gather data, you have to find meaning behind the results. And that takes us down to our conclusion. After analyzing what your data says, you're now going to have to decide, was the hypothesis supported by the data or was it not? If it's not supported, the hypothesis was false. Even if a little bit of it was false, you've got to start over. So this is not the end of the experiment. In real life, when scientists run experiments, you don't just run one, find out your hypothesis was wrong, and just stop. You've got to start over. And so we can take the hypothesis is not supported and actually create an arrow back to hypothesis. You would have to create a brand new hypothesis, create a new experiment, collect data again, and it all starts over. And you analyze it and see if the hypothesis was supported. However, if your data seems to be showing you that the hypothesis is supported, that the hypothesis is true, what would you do next as a real scientist? Would you jump in the air and say, woohoo, my hypothesis is true? Is that the end of the experiment? Not really. A real scientist has to prove this is actually what happened and it's not a fluke. So we're actually going to take this back to experiment. And you would have to do this help if I could spell. You'd have to run multiple trials on your experiment and find out. So these are the five basic steps which I like to call POHEC when we deal with the scientific method. So in many of the labs we do this year you're going to have an opportunity to design your own experiment. 
So let's take a look at some common vocabulary that you're going to encounter as you work on designing your own experiment. The first vocabulary word is a hypothesis. We mentioned this before. A hypothesis is an educated guess. What you're trying to do is determine a possible explanation for a problem. I had mentioned that a hypothesis should be written as an if-then statement. If this happens, then that will happen. So when you're working on your hypotheses, you want to make sure you write it in that way. I also want to make sure that you write a hypothesis that is actually testable. For instance, um, if you write something like, there are alien life forms in galaxies far, far away. Well, how are you going to be able to test that? Um, that's not something we can actually do at this moment, is go to a planet far, far away and see if there are other life forms there. So that's not a good hypothesis. If you went to another planet, you would find other life forms. So in the lab, let's make sure that we can use a testable hypothesis. Another example of that would be um, something like a statement of uh, Brian Erlacher is the best middle linebacker ever. Well, that involves bias. So a statement like that, although it might be your opinion, is not something that we can actually test in our laboratory. And again, both of those statements did not have if-then statements, and we are trying to encourage you to write them in that way. The next vocabulary phrase that we've got on there is independent variable. When you go into your experiment, you are going to purposely change one variable. And you're going to see how it affects another variable. So the one that you change, that's called the independent variable. And let me give you an example of that. Um, if we're talking about trying to make the tomato plants grow bigger, I had mentioned if the tomato plants received more water, then they would grow bigger. Okay, so in order to test that, think about what your independent variable would be. You've got to provide more water, and you can select various increments. Perhaps each plant will receive 10 milliliters of water, 20 milliliters of water, 50 milliliters of water, 100 milliliters of water per day. You are purposely changing that variable, and you get to decide how much of that water you wanted to add to the plant. So you chose it. That's how it becomes the independent variable. Now you'll notice there's a dependent variable. What we were hoping in the tomato plant case is that if we added more water, they would grow bigger. So first you have to decide how are you going to measure that. Do you want it to be based on height? Do you want it to be placed on plumpness or volume of the actual tomatoes? What you're going to have to test is that variable. You want to see how is it changing as a result of changing the water. So we could check the height of the plants and check it every day and see, okay, this plant received 10 milliliters of water. It grew this much. Let's compare it to the other plants that received different amounts of water. So what we're trying to see is how was our dependent variable, our height, affected by us purposely changing the amount of water that the tomato plant received. Okay, going on to a constant. Every time you have an experiment, you are only to purposely change one variable. And as a result of that, we're going to measure how the dependent variable changes. You should not, under any circumstances, be changing more than those two variables throughout your experiment. We purposely change one, the other one is affected by that. Let's say we suddenly, change, suddenly change the amount of sunlight that these plants receive. You've now changed a variable which can affect the height of the plant. How would you know if the plant grew because of the water or because of the sun? Another example would be putting the plants in uh, different types of soil. And the soil might have different pHs, which is um, testing their acidity. It might have different amounts of fertilizer in it. And all of those factors, that could affect the height of the plant. So what we want to do is we want to change only one thing purposely. Everything else stays constant and we're going to see how the dependent variable changes as a result of our purposeful change. One of our words on here is a control. A lot of students confuse control with constant. Now the way that you can know what this is, is you'll notice it says a standard by which your experimental results can be compared. 
you can't compare your results to a constant. Okay, that doesn't make sense. What we're looking for is more of a trial. For instance, with the tomato plants, we need to take the tomato plants and do nothing with them, make no changes whatsoever. Then we'll look at our experimental groups in which we change the amount of water being added to the plant. If those plants did indeed see an increase in growth because of the water added, then we would be able to understand that based on what we saw with the control group. So the control is the trial in which absolutely nothing changes at all. There is nothing that is going to be changed in that experiment whatsoever, and that way we can compare it to the one where we change the independent variable. Lastly, you're always going to be writing a conclusion and our, uh, our explanation here, a summary of the experimental results that indicates if your hypothesis is true or false. So this is where you take all of your data and you analyze it and you try to say, yes, the tomato plants did increase in growth because we added more water or we do not have significant proof that this is what's going on because some of the plants got bigger with more water, but some got smaller, so it's inconclusive. Or flat out we could say, this is 100% false. What we actually saw is the opposite. When we added more water, the plants actually grew less. So your conclusion is going to take all of your data from your experimental uh, your experimental results, it's going to analyze it and try to decide if your hypothesis was true or your hypothesis was false.